You're listening to the Teach Better Talk podcast featuring expert educators eager to share progressive tactics to reach more students. Teach Better Talk is created by teachers and fueled by passion. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to episode 189 of Teach Better Talk. My name's Ray Hewart, and as always, I am with my lazy co-host, Jeff Gargas. Jeff, how are you? I'm lazy. You are. <laughs> just lazy. Yeah, just... I'm, I'm, not, I'm just going to give you that answer. I'm giving you a lazy answer. Too. I just I just want the world to know that while I do agree with this word, this word actually came from the guest. So it was not me who decided to use this word. Brad demanded it. I got beat up in this episode. I feel like you did not. You're so I really funny. feel like it was it was just beat. Just just make fun of Jeff Day. It was rough. I won't uh, lie to you. No. I hope that you guys enjoyed this episode. I know we're going to get into it soon, but you have to go listen to Brad's uh, podcast because I had so much fun being a guest on it, but I also have enjoyed listening to his episodes. And so he's a really intelligent guy. I think that you guys should go listen to that one too. Yeah. Um, speaking of a podcaster who's also a really intelligent guy, um, can we talk about Dave Schmidt for a second in his book? Yeah. He has a Is brand cool? new book coming out tomorrow, Jeff. Tomorrow yeah, if you, if, his book comes if out. You were, if you were listening to this on the day that this episode released on Monday, July 13th, Dave's book, new book comes out tomorrow, Tuesday, July 14th. And his new book is Make an Assessment, Assessment Work for Educators Who Hate Data But Love Kids. I and love it. I love it. So um, have you – I now I haven't, I haven't got to read the book. I haven't seen it. Um, have you seen it yet? Have you got to read it yet? I want to preface. I have not seen the final edit of the book, but it was a part of the beginning conversations of this book, which seems like ages ago. And I actually feel a little ignorant because when we were talking about it, you know, I feel like almost a year ago, I don't know that I realized he was going to write a book on this topic when we were initially in that conversation. So Dave Schmidt is somebody I very, very widely respect. And I am so thrilled that he's putting out a book about assessment because if, in my opinion, this is the book you want to read if you want to be better at assessment because it's not going to be focused on data. It's not going to be focused on scales or all the other things that you're going to look into in terms of how to look at data. It's going to be the practical things you need for your classroom, which to me is always what I'm more drawn to. I'm hoping that those practical things are, I know those practical things are rooted in those best practices, which is data supported. But it's so much more important to me that I hear about the tactical takeaways to actually put them in my classroom more than anything else. And I'm stoked to see Dave kind of make that all happen in this book. Yeah, well, I mean, I love we love Dave. Dave's awesome. Um, I've tricked Dave into somehow joining me every Wednesday at 4 p.m. Eastern time for cocktails and randomness and talking just because I just love talking to Dave that much that I'm like, I need an excuse to make you just talk with me and hang out with me for an hour every day or every week. So uh, super excited for, for his book. This is his third. Yes, it's his third. And for those who don't know Dave very well, take a minute to go connect with him because he yes. not only has three books, which by the way, you should go check out. And one of those books, if not multiple of them are available for free on his podcast. But like I was going to say, he has a podcast. So mm-hmm. you really can kind of get the, a ton of different Dave Schmidt content, whether you're just like buying a book or listening to his book for free on his podcast or listening to his interviews. This, this guy does a ton of stuff. I don't know how he has the time to do it. Yeah, um, absolutely. So Schmidt is S C H M I T T O U. If you need to know how to spell that, as long as you can spell that name, you can go find him everywhere and connect with him. Uh, not only like Ray mentioned, not only does he have the books, he's got the podcast, uh, and I think you're gathering from Ray and I talking about him that he's also just a great guy, a good person to connect with. Uh, I, I consider him a good friend at this point, and I, I'm so honored to be able to say that. Uh, so check him out. I'm so pumped. Can I Dave, say creepy? Yeah, you can interrupt me again. That'd be fine. Well, I mean, you can finish your thought, but then I have a creepy <laughs> comment. Go ahead. No, well, go ahead and tell your comment now. No, now we want to hear what's the what's what's. Your I was about? I was trying to just say, Dave, congratulations on on the new book, but you can you can share your creepy thought instead if you'd like i mean dave we're very proud of your book we love you oodles and we're so proud of your new book all of our listeners need to go listen to it but i do have a creepy comment that i just want the world to know i believe that there are two best voices in educational podcasting 
One is Dave Schmidto, and the other is our guest, Brad. I, I kid you not, I think they have the best voices for podcasting. I know that's creepy, but when you, our listeners, go listen to either this episode or Dave Schmidto's podcast or Brad's podcast, podcast you're going to know, they have great just radio voices. They do. Right, now, now we got to do this two seconds. So, like, we got those are two guys, so we're going to put those in the best male voice for podcasting that's fine and, and i don't care what you say kelly croy has to be in there too oh that's he's a, got a great to. voice for podcasting. i know i know um so now so uh, another episode somewhere we won't do this episode we're gonna do another episode we need to pick out the three top female voices in in podcasting too Ooh, gonna... sarah johnson would be on my list okay i could go through this later sorry, sorry go ahead no you got it sarah johnson good i'm with you on that one Sarah Johnson, I'm sorry. I love Rachel Hollis, her voice on her podcast. Her, she has a oh, great voice. educational podcast. Get Rachel Hollis out of here. Okay, I'm sorry. So Sarah Johnson. Sarah Johnson. Oh, man. Other. Oh, Which I love. Which is the In Awe, by the way, is the In Awe podcast. Yes. Wait, Pav, though, has a beautiful voice. Pav does. Oh, um, my Yeah, gosh. the Staff Room podcast. Yes. Staff Room podcast. Mm-hmm. I personally, like, I love listening to Peace Lone Joseph. Oh, my gosh. Peace Lone like, I could just put her in my ears and. And laugh with her and connect with her just forever in it. So there you go, boo. And she's greater is in, is in me. So there's three. And again, Ooh, we did that. We did that in like less than 60 seconds. That was impressive. I know. Like all well these done, people right? do have great podcasts, but just purely based on voice alone, they yeah, also this was, win in that category. Yeah, yeah. By the way, all great podcasts too. Like they would win, they would be there. Yes. But this was specifically on voice. So I love it. Uh, <laughs> to all of our other podcast voices out there, please know that we love you as well. <laughs> these are just the three the six that came in. So kudos to all you. All right, let's talk about Brad real quick. So Brad is an instructional uh, technology coach. He's down in central Florida. He also is, as we've mentioned, the host, uh, his podcast is Pl- the plan and period podcast. He also does a live weekly coding show called unscripted, which is uh, hosted on the participates uh, on their uh, Twitch channel and their YouTube channel. Uh, really cool. He was, he's just a lot of fun. You said it earlier, like he's, he's incredibly intelligent uh, he was just a lot of fun. He he loved. I loved it. his podcast is more just sort of off the cuff, which really kind of happened in our on our podcast here. We got a little off topic, a little little off at the beginning and at the end. He takes credit for that, so we're gonna give him credit for that. But uh, this was a really good, really good episode. I have a lot of notes written down of like quotes, so you're gonna get a lot out of this one. I'm gonna steal a lot of times. Ray says this. I'm gonna say this time. This might be one of the ones you want to go back and listen to twice. Just saying. So. Ray, anything else? I know you're a huge Brad fan, but I am. anything that stuck out for, for you during this episode, other than his amazing podcast voice? I was going to say, don't judge me about his voice. Other than that, enjoy the episode, friends. We appreciate you. All right, with that, let's get into episode 189 with Brad Schreffler. All right. Hey, guys, real quick, I want to give a shout out to Jennifer Apple, who is publishing an amazing children's book with her dog maya if you can believe it award winning dog is coming out on july 9th and we are so excited to celebrate with jen and maya as this children book hits amazon and gets in the hands of children around the country check out award winning dog on amazon or barnes and noble but if i were you i would go over to awardwinningculture.com because i'm pretty sure there you can order the book and get some free stickers So go over there, check that out, and a massive congratulations to Jen and Maya on this big accomplishment. Let's get back to the episode. All right, we are here, and we are chatting with Brad Schreffler. And Brad, it's awesome to have you on, chatting with you. Um, We were talking a little bit about uh, kind of a unique thing that's going on in your world right now, so maybe we'll touch on that. I want to talk about your podcast. I want to get to know you, learn all about you. Before we get too deep into things, how are you feeling right now? You know, I'm I'm pretty good. Uh, I'm first of all, I'm excited to be here. I like, I you know, like you said, I'm a podcaster, but I was a little nervous to come talk to you guys today. Like I was, I don't know, I just like got a little bit of butterflies. So I'm excited. Nervous? What are you nervous about? I don't know. I, like it's like a big deal. Maybe on Teach Better Talk. I don't even know. Oh, it's Jeff that makes you nervous, right? Like he's so scary and intimidating while also being lazy. <laughs> it's really a skill, don't you think? My laziness is just very intimidating. Yes, that's exactly what that's exactly what I again, I think the one word to describe Jeff Gargas is definitely lazy. He just like does nothing. I don't think he does anything <laughs> at all. Oh, <laughs> so glad we're on the same if be, before you go on here, right? If anyone is listening still, uh, <laughs> if you could please tweet out and let us know of the two of us, Ray or myself, 
which one would make you nervous if you came on our podcast? I'm curious to see how that comes out because I'm pretty sure it's Ray. It's not me. People would be so like feel so warm and welcomed with me, and they you're just cold. You're like steel, Jeff Gargan. You're, you're like an ice princess. Come on now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brad, are you still here? You should be. You should have left by now. I, you should have left. Hey, listen, I, like. <laughs> This is this kind of banter and silliness is way more my speed than trying to like answer questions in 15 seconds. So this works. This is fine. <laughs> Don't worry, Brad. That happens at the end of the episode. You're going to be all warmed up by then. <laughs> We're scratching all the questions. Scratching okay, wait. All the questions. But go. the question I had was a really good one. Can I get to my right, we'll go. Yeah. I mean, of course, because I'm slightly intimidated. So go ahead. Oh, my God. Listeners know they are all team Ray. We're not even going to pretend. Brad, I, this is not a hard question. I just want to make sure that our listeners kind of learn about you as a person, besides just being an awesome podcaster who puts up with Jeff and I, but really like, tell us about yourself. How do you answer that, you know, very traditional question of, Hey Brad, what do you do? Um, what do I do? Well, it's summer. And basically what I do is sit in my garage and cut wood and, and nail it together. Um, that's what like carpentry has become my hobby out of nowhere. So that's pretty much what I do right now. Um, but in general, I am a, an instructional technology coach, uh, working my way into a, hopefully an assistant principal job here in the next year and just kind of dedicated to working with teachers and making teachers, the priority from a leadership standpoint and, and working on relationships and st- teacher morale and that kind of stuff. And just also love talking to other educators and education stakeholders about what we do every day. Cause I think it's such an interesting and fascinating field and there's never a shortage of things to talk about. So, you know, absolutely right. There's never a shortage of things to talk about, but that, but I'm going to talk about your woodworking because <laughs> that's where my mind went. Have you built anything recently? Like anything, like that you're proud of that you're excited about maybe that's being used in your oh home. yeah oh yeah i've uh let's see what so are you building what kind of projects are you doing we built i built shelves uh over a cabinet that are kind of like the industrial style style exposed shelves with the uh, nice. bars attached to the ceiling i've built multiple planter beds there's like a big eight foot long raised one that i'm growing some veggies in in my backyard and now i'm like just making a little bit of side money because my wife was getting annoyed at how many new tools i kept buying and so <laughs> i was like all right well i'll just start selling some of these raised planter beds so i built two today that one sold and one's getting picked up tomorrow so you know i'm almost paying for the tools i'm buying so it's working out it's like a self-sustaining kind of thing i'm very very modern and hip uh brad i was so excited to learn more about this and then you said you started charging because my my comment was hey i have some things that need to be done at my house i don't want to pay for it you're like ray, no official. ray, ray I, I i will do it for you for you ray it'd be totally free yes yes jeff do you hear that team ray boom intimidation <laughs> <laughs> Just in case anyone was wondering. Uh, so let's continue to stay off the original normal questions that we talk about. Um, so you've got a podcast. I do. I and do. you also do a, I didn't know this. I saw this when you said you do an, a weekly uh, live coding show. Yeah, that's kind of new too. So let's, that, that's... let's talk about that first. Hey, Brad, I just want you to know I knew about the weekly coding show. I know Jeff didn't, but I just, I knew, just so you know. We talked about it on our morning coffee time. That's that's. No, you, I think I talked to you for the morning coffee like a week before we started that. So yes, morning coffee. Exactly. What is the, what is morning coffee time he that I haven't been invited to? He joined us for a daily drop in. Oh, daily drop in. Nice. We're doing on Twitch, and if you let him speak, he'll tell you all about it, Jeff. <laughs> Jeez, I love it. I I am like really excited that this episode's totally off the rails because it matches my personality perfectly. I'm really excited about it. <laughs> so is so is the Conan show is it, is it on Twitch? It is, yeah. So uh, it's nice. I'm kind of in conjunction with Participate. So it's on the Inside Participate Twitch channel and on their YouTube channel and stuff too, uh, working with uh, uh, Mike Washburn to, to make that happen. But the idea behind the show is it's uh, we're kind of doing project-based coding. So the first project we've been working on is a, a Google add-on for Google Slides that does interactive notebook management. So if you use Google Slides as an interactive notebook, you know you can set it up for your kids, but then every time you have to add another slide to it, you got to like share the, the new slide and have them copy and paste it and all that stuff. So what my add-on will do is create all the copies for the kids. And then anytime you want, you can click a button and it'll push a new slide of whatever you've designed directly into all the student copies. Um, But the idea for the show is really to just sort of talk about coding and ways that teachers can use it to really save them time, add new features to their life and really simplify things. Because it's something that I do a lot of in my day job is is finding you know computer based si- solutions to system wide problems. So 
uh, it's just been really fun. And I have usually have someone else join me and talk through the code that I'm working on. And I just kind of sit there for an hour every Tuesday at one o'clock Eastern on the Twitch channel and just code for an hour. It's a lot of fun. So you are, you, I assume you're sharing your screen so we can see, you can see all the, the, the coding that you're doing all the lines and everything. Yeah, absolutely. So we've got right. video on there of me sometimes, and then the, the coding is really taking up the most part. So you can see all the lines of code. You can see all the times that I open the search browser and have to look up how to write a specific piece of code. <laughs> that's I constant. So yeah, it's good times. Now, what are you writing in? What's your, what's your, do you have a, do you, is it always the same language or are you swapping back and forth depending on what you're doing? Like, where do you, do you have a go-to or? Uh, most of what I do nowadays is on AppScript, which is the Google okay. Google language yeah. for integrating with their G Suite services. And the reason is our school is a G Suite school. Our district is a G Suite district. So we use a lot of Google services. So being able to connect those dots has really saved me a lot of time. So, And actually, it was really fun last week. I had an actual developer from Google on the show talking me through code stuff. It was super cool. I nerded that out a little super bit. Super cool. Uh, so the the Twitch channel again, it's participate. It's called Inside Participate or Yeah, twitch.tv slash inside participate. Let's give a I mean, how about a, just a quick shout out to participate. They're doing some awesome stuff. And and our dude Mike Washmore burn, I, I think he's taking them a whole new level personally. So shout out to you, Mike. Uh super cool. That's really cool, Brad. So let's talk uh let's just keep talking about you, right? That's what we're supposed to be doing here. So let's talk about your podcast. So I know that a couple people from our team has been on a podcast. I know Ray's been on a podcast. I know Caitlin Giordano has been on a podcast. I also know that I have not been on the podcast. Yeah, I was going to ask you when really, we're done really recording. Good. I was, I was going to ask you when we're done recording, but you know, I would love to have you, Jeff. Um, yeah, you, you, you do not have to say that just because I brought it up. It's cool. You did Everyone, just say that because you ever, brought it up. Everyone understands. No, uh, I've heard just really, really great things about it. I have listened to, I listened to both their episodes and there was like two or three on Trunk to go. The other people that I listen to, I'll have to remember. But, um, but, but from both Ray and Caitlin, they would both just love the way that you run it and the way it flows and stuff. But, uh, so congrats on just how well that's going. Can you share with our listeners, uh, you know, about the podcast, where to come from, why you start doing it, and like what what can we expect from it? Yeah, of course. So the show is the Planning Period Podcast, and um, it it really kind of stemmed from the kinds of conversation I was having in school as a coach. You know, it was kind of like those conversations you have with your neighbor teacher when you're both on planning or both on lunch together. Those just like sometimes, you know, sometimes it's ridiculous and silliness, but then other times it's really serious and something comes up and you're talking high level policy and considerations there. And so, you know, the show is really meant to be very laid back, very informal, but then still deal with very serious issues, you know? And so I, it's, it's kind of the way I've designed it is sort of this back and forth of, uh, you know, deep controversial issues and topics sometimes and whatever kind of interests my guest and me and a guest just sitting and talking for about an hour and kind of whatever pops up, pops up. So that's, that's kind of the idea behind the show. I love it. That's awesome. So I, I got to ask, um, Ray, Caitlin, which one was the better episode? Oh, oh you rough. can't ask that. Caitlin is, Caitlin's a rock star. You can't ask that. So I, I would put it this way. Caitlin was solid energy. Like I, I felt like I had chugged seven cups of coffee by the time I was done with <laughs> that, that episode. Right. I, I was ready to go take on the world. And Ray just like blew my mind a couple times. There were a couple times where I was genuinely left speechless, just processing what she had just said. And like, that was awesome and amazing. So they were both really good. I don't know that I could put one above the other. They're different, but they're both, they were both awesome, awesome guests. I won't lie, Brad. I am honored to even be in the relatively same category as Caitlin Giordano. So I appreciate <laughs> that. <laughs> First off, that was an incredibly well done political answer. I really respect that. No, um, but I, I'm going to say this, and if you listen, you may want to sit down. But because we joke a lot, but both of those women are phenomenal. So I knew that was going to be a tough, tough call there. So, um, and uh, Ray, you, you and Caitlin are in a whole another stratosphere compared to me. So um, I, I, I enjoy both of them really a, a lot. So uh, loving the podcast, really, you know, congrats again on, on how well that's going. It's really, really cool. So let's, let's go. Um, let's go to failure. Let's, let's jump over to this one here. So, you know, we talk a lot on this podcast about failure. We, we love sharing the stories, how we overcome uh, and what we take away from that. So can you share with us a story that you've had a failure in your life? How did you overcome that? And what did you take away from that experience? Yeah. So, um, my most recent failure is a failure to come up with a good answer to this question. <laughs> um, 
I, I struggled with this question really. And I, and as I thought about it more and more, it's not that I don't fail, right? Like I, I think everyone fails obviously. Um, but I think to me that I sort of live by a sort of a, an iterative process and sort of a flexibility. So when something goes wrong, I just tend to pivot and try something else uh, and or redirect as things have gone. Um, I don't know if it's a, a memory problem or what that I can't think of any super, super major failures. But uh, but as I kept reflecting on this question, what I what I just kind of kept coming back to is like, I, I tend to be very flexible. And when a pl- and when a plan falls through, I, I kind of try to come up with the next one and and work with what, you know, keep the things that worked and get rid of the things that didn't. Um, you know, I, I kind of think about it like coding. I, I kind of live my life like coding where it's, okay, there was a bug in that plan, fix the piece that has the bug and then try it again and just run it over and over and over again with minimal, with, you know, small changes to try to to get to the solution that is a success. I think that that is like the perfect example of a failure because we're all just trying. I feel like when you think of a failure, like, oh, it means that a time I didn't do well, but the ability to grow and try to adapt is really the main focus. So I like that, Brett. That's awesome. So in terms of like all that you're doing right now, because you really are doing a whole bunch, even outside of the podcast, which I know we've touched on a bunch. Do you have something that's really exciting you about education right now and, and what you do? Yeah, I think, I mean, what's definitely on my mind is, is what is, what is school going to look like when we come back? But I think in general, all of this pandemic and drastic change and everything that's happened in the last six months now has really got me excited about just the future in general. Um, There, there are so many possibilities for how things could go and there are so many great ways they could go. Um, And I know that, you know, Distance learning, obviously, in most cases was or emergency learning or, you know, disaster learning has, was put into place so, so quickly that in most cases it, it was less than perfect. But it, but again, there were parts that really, really worked. And I think it it pushed teachers that are have been hesitant to get out of their comfort zones in classrooms to to force them to get out of their comfort zone. And, and I think it's exposed a lot of people to a lot of new ideas. And, I, and I'm excited about what that's going to mean when we come back and you know what whenever that is and and how the things we learned during this time are going to change the face of education going forward i'm excited that we've seen at least for a short period of time no standardized testing or limited standardized testing the idea that that could stay away and i feel like there's a an upswell and a movement that's making that case that hey we managed to get through last year without it why do we need it next year um, and there's some areas that have already canceled standardized testing for next year. So I have I have excitement that that could be a big change and that we we could see some major, major system change as a result of all this. Mm, super interesting perspective. You know, Brad, the next question we always ask is question five. And it's it kind of takes me back to when we were recording together for your podcast. One of my favorite questions that you asked me, which totally stumped me, by the way, is on your podcast at some point throughout your conversation, you typically ask your guests, like, what's the problem in education that if you fixed it, you know, education would be so much better. And I was so stumped, but it really led to us having a really great conversation. And this kind of alludes back in the same point of of this question. Question number five is always about the one piece of advice. And I kind of want you to think of these as similar. So if you had one opportunity to give one piece of advice to any type of educator listening, whether they're brand new in the classroom or they've been in the classroom for years, what would your one piece of advice be? Hmm. Uh, you know, I, this is uh, this is going to be a really sappy answer, but it's where my head is at recently. Um, and, and I think it, it's come about as, as for a lot of different reasons. But I would say the, the best advice to give a new teacher is you're doing enough, even when it doesn't feel like it sometimes. Uh, because I think that this job, you know, someone said to me one time, they said that you could do this job 24-7, 365, like, and you would still have things left to do. You could stop sleeping. You could do nothing but work. And there would still be more things you could do to make it better. And so at some point, enough has to be enough. And that should never mean that you don't try to improve and that you don't try to be better every day. But 
at some point you also have to put other things in your life in and worry about those other things in your life. I mean, I know we joked about my, my woodworking and, and carpentry stuff, but that has become my sort of personal escape from the, the stress of, of the job and the stress of thinking about what does school look like and everything. And so I think that, yeah, you know, you're doing enough, even when it doesn't always feel like you are. Hmm. See, good answer there, Brad. I like that. That's absolutely true. And it's so funny that you say you can do this job for hours and hours all year long and still have things you want to do. I really, truly believe that. It's great insight. That's inc- incredible advice. Um, and, and I like you twist it into at some point enough's got to be enough, right? Like you can be, a, you can go above and beyond. You can push in because you want to, because you love it. But at some point, some, it's got to be enough and you've got to take that time to sit back and chill. I love that you have, your, you know, we're working on it. We talked about it and stuff like that, that that's the thing that you're using the, to give yourself the time. That's really cool. Super powerful. So I love that. Uh, let's do the next six questions. I'm going to throw them at you. Your goal is to answer each one in 15 seconds or less. You ready? I am so not ready, but let's do it. <laughs> <laughs> what is one ed tech tool you cannot live without? This is the easy one. G Suite. I could not live without G Suite, but if I had to be more specific, Google Sheets. Uh, give us a book you're reading right now. I am a terrible reader and I don't read very often, which is great because I'm a former English teacher. Um, but the last book I read and enjoyed was The Principal by Michael Fullen. But what I'm actually reading right now is Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban because I'm reading it to my son at bedtime every night. Uh, who do you need to follow on social media today? Uh, I mentioned them already, but I got to give a shout out to Mike Washburn at Mr. Washburn and Steve Isaacs, Mr. Isaacs, Mr. Underscore Isaacs. Um, and then uh, I'm part of the On Podcast Media group. And I think that's a great way to find other podcasts and other great information out there. So On Podcast Media. Uh, and what's a good YouTube channel or website for educators? So <laughs> I don't even know if this is good just for educators. I just think this is where I get a lot of great information and expanding my brain, which is Last Week Tonight with John Oliver. It's not always uh, PC or uh, uh safer work but the ideas expressed in there are always amazing so i recommend that he is good he's hilarious but also there's actually a, like it's very informative also yeah the depth, uh, and the depth yeah not, awesome. not usually suitable for work not really except for right now i mean we're all working at home so it's kind of suitable at this point <laughs> exactly uh, depending yeah. on if your younger smaller co-workers happen to be sneaking around anyway uh just use the headphones you'll be good give us a daily weekly or monthly routine every teacher should get into uh, shout out to Mandy Freilich because she got me to start this and it's changed my life. And so it's daily meditation. Uh, I highly recommend it. And what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? So th- this was said to me by my principal recently as I was getting frustrated with someone who I didn't feel like was doing something they should have. And he said, you know, Brad, if everyone else could do what you're doing, then they would be where you are. Whoa. Good piece of advice. Wait, say that again. One more time slower. Okay. <laughs> That's not what I'm good at. Um, he said, <laughs> he said, if everyone could do what you're doing, then they would be where you are. That is totally a trophy moment. That has to be, Jeff. Come on. That's a I'm trophy good moment. I'm good with it. <laughs> Teach Better Talk trophy. We will be sending it your way. That That is a great one. I love that. You know, as I've been listening to episodes recently, I kept thinking there's no way I'm getting a trophy because 15 <laughs> seconds to say anything is just not how I work. But I'm, I'm excited. I'll call it like an honorable mention trophy because it wasn't time wise, but cool. I'll take it. <laughs> no, I'll, any type of mic drop, make, mic drop a moment like that, I think counts. So no stress, Brad. You're good to go. Um, Brad, if it, if it makes you feel any better, we don't actually send you a trophy. So. <gasps> we Why don't? <laughs> just ruined my dreams we don't jeff i thought you took so much time like packaging it up and putting the peanuts in there and then you pack no i i typically just tell you what you want to hear ray it's (gasps) just what i'm here to do are you gonna tell me that santa doesn't exist too because you know i track santa every christmas how could you you say this i know you do i won't i won't i won't tell you and i won't i'm not gonna say anything about santa oh my god brad i'm so sorry that we've (laughs) shattered your dreams i'm so sorry (laughs) You know, I was so excited to be here, and then we end on a sour note like that. I just don't know what to do. I know. This podcast is out of hand. We can't actually air this. Are we still recording? <laughs> For all well, of our listeners, we, we, had think- to can- we, we announced this morning that we canceled the conference, so I'm in a bad mood, okay? I'm ruining everybody's day today. That's what I'm out to do. I'm sorry, to- Brad. You just came on the wrong day, man. I, it's just I'm taking everyone down with me. All right. For all of our listeners that are still with us, probably breathing heavily into a paper bag, 
the trophy does exist. He's just kidding. Okay, just so everyone knows. I just don't want to give it up. That makes me feel better. <laughs> Brad, would, would you mind sharing how our network can stay connected? Because I know they're not only going to want to follow you on Twitter and Instagram, but also subscribe, rate, and review your podcast, and just be an active listener. So, will you give them all that information? Yeah, absolutely. So I am at Brad Schreffler everywhere. There's no C in Schreffler. Everyone wants to put one there. Uh, just spell it out how it sounds. Uh, but at Brad Schreffler on Twitter, Instagram, my website is bradschreffler.com. Um, and then for the podcast, it's just planning period podcast, wherever you get your podcast, you'll be able to find it with that. I'm the only one out there. There was one like way before me a couple years before, and they only did like six episodes, but couldn't get it can't get the the handle for it but otherwise planning period podcast will find me and uh unscripted is on tuesdays at one o'clock on twitch.tv slash inside participate or check the recordings on the participate youtube channel and you can find all the links and all the resources that we talked about over uh at teachbetter.com in the show notes so make sure you head over there also though all those links to connect with brad keep the conversations going so check out teachbetter.com for all of that be sure to hit subscribe so you don't miss any upcoming episodes and if you can give us a rating and review we'd really appreciate that as well let's keep taking this one step further think of just three of your colleagues who need to hear these amazing stories and connect with these amazing educators and share this podcast with them Brad, this was a great episode. Um, I'm really glad that you just stuck it out with us because it got kind of ridiculous at the beginning and at the end. It was just, I don't know why you were here, but I'm super glad you were because there was so much awesomeness in this episode. I'm so excited for people to get a chance to listen to it and hopefully reaching out and connect with you and listen to your podcast and check out the Twitch uh, show and everything that you got going on, man. But I really appreciate you coming on and hanging out with us for a little bit. Thank you. Hey, thank you guys. This was fun. I enjoyed being here. And I, I would like to believe that I'm the reason it got out of control. That makes me feel good. I'm I'm good with that. I'm good with that. <laughs> and until next time, let's get out there and let's teach better.